uh, for the first time in some time, we're moving out of the trash environment. Wow. I think we covered that exhaustively, yeah, we, yeah. Don't, haven't we? <laughs> uh, I think but we got every angle of it, didn't we? A, a lot of good information Very came much. out of that. I, uh, I thought I was somewhat knowledgeable, came away feeling that I'm a lot more knowledgeable now. Yeah, and that last nugget there that the landfill in Berkeley County has maybe the 10 years. 10 years. That's, yeah. that's a little close. Yeah. Right? That's, That's very close. close. What's the alternatives? Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And you have a foundation that uh, in, in, encourages the roadside pickup of trash, which probably was a direct result in this state, if you remember how bad the problem was for so long, oh. from people not having access to having their trash picked up. Yeah, it, it was. And Clint mentioned open dumps. Uh, Clint was a real advocate and one of the real promoters about g- addressing the open dumps. What we're doing alongside the road is somewhat different. It both is a, a product of disposal. I think open dumps more is a result of people no, not being able to get rid of the trash. The trash alongside the litter is the fact that people are just too lazy to uh, w- hold in the car until they got home. They just take the convenient way out and throw it throughout the windside. Uh, but let me give a, the roadside letter. I uh, uh, I think that uh, uh, the county council uh, is doing making making a major breakthrough. They don't have enough personnel doing it, but they have someone from the uh, community services out on the roads probably four days a week, maybe five days a week. Um, they there's resources not nearly enough to cover the needs of the roads but they are making a difference i want to give a real shout out to mike lang and the county council well done sir our guest in this segment is shane farthing economic and community development director in the city of martinsburg shane good morning to you thanks for coming in good morning thanks for inviting me you and ferretti have law degrees so i want uh, bill maria Feel free to cross-examine. Yeah. Okay. Be tough. Are, right. you, are you kidding me? I know when I'm intellectually uh, 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 inferior to, so I'm going to let these folks just talk. Let well, them. and I feel like my household, some of that has rubbed off. So that sort of <laughs> counts a little bit, law, right? Law degree by osmosis. That's right. We'll take it there. Shane, uh, I'm not sure exactly how much you're involved in this directly, but the uh, city of Martinsburg is looking for some input on uh, what they are calling their uh, their gateways here. Can you give us more information? Yeah, I can tell you a little more about that. It's something that I think we're all a little bit all involved in because it is really trying to, to do sort of a citywide improvement. I, I think everyone's familiar with a lot of the projects that the city's been doing right in the historic downtown area with Martin Street, the Frog Hollow Trail, the Creekside. Uh, lots of different beautification projects and ADA upgrades and those sorts of things. And this gateway project is now moving a a step out of that downtown center and looking at the roadways that bring you to the downtown. Um, So we've got it sort of designed where we've got all the main corridors that would bring you into the city of Martinsburg, and we've hired professional planners and engineers to take a look at that. And what we really want to hear from the public is what they want to see as far as streetscape, as far as visual improvements. We want it to feel like a real, like, different place. We want you to know that you've come into Martinsburg when you've come into Martinsburg. And that's not the case on some of our roads right now. Um, so we're not sure exactly what the the end goal is, except that we want to make it have that feel. We want it to be something that the public appreciates. We want it to be good for residents and good for visitors. And we've, we've essentially engaged these folks to start taking the input on that from the public. So they've put out a uh, very detailed survey that's available online. There's also going to be a meeting on June 1st at the Holiday Inn from 5 to 7 where they'll be taking input. And really, it, it's sort of a open-ended survey. I don't know if you guys have had a chance to take it or click through it yet. There's some specific questions about what you want to see as far as roadway and streetscape, but there's also an awful lot of just, this is the place to tell your opinion. Um, one, one of the things that always... Um, you know, it's 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 a mild frustration, I would say, for everybody in City Hall is when you have a public input process, you do a project, and then a month later, someone comes up and says, well, you should have done this. This is the chance to get all of your should haves. This is the chance to tell us your could haves, your big ideas. This is where the planners are going to be putting together um, what we're calling a sort of concept plan. It's a conceptual plan or a master plan of what all these things are going to look like. And we need to get all of the ideas onto that master plan so that we can then break them down into individual projects and figure out how to find those dollars and find those budgets and figure out how to implement these things. The city recently rewrote its ordinances, took some public input on that as well. And will will some of those 
help make this project more easily done or accomplished. Are you referring to the planning uh, yes. ordinance and the zoning ordinance? Yes. So, so essentially all of it works together in concert. Um, some of the big projects that you're seeing that we've been able to attract, whether it's the revitalization of the mills or the uh, opening of the garage food hall or any of these sorts of things, th those have been possible because the zoning made those uses attractive to those users. So the zoning made it so that these big things are, are able to happen on those parcels. And now that we foresee those big things coming, it's a chance for the public sector to say, how do we get our roads, our transportation, our streetscape, the rest of the community sort of ready for these big changes? And a lot of this is, is driven by um, the need to ensure that we are able to plan in advance for these projects because there's not some giant pool of money that comes along with all of these things. Um, transportation dollars in this state tend to be led by the state and they're led by where the state has its highways and that kind of thing. And then the cities, um, we, what we mostly do is try to keep our, our local roads paved and that kind of thing. And if we want to do something that's much, much bigger than that, we have to find a new funding source for that. And usually that means we have to go looking for either state grant dollars or federal grant dollars. And those don't usually come by formula. We have to have the project written up so that when the funds come available, we can apply for it. And at the end of the day, maybe months down the line, after we've taken all of this input and created this master plan, these engineers are going to break these down into the particular projects that are the ones that we'll then be competing for funds for. So we have to start thinking now, or we had to start thinking back before we did all the planning of what kind of city we want to see. And the planning and the zoning all said, okay, here's what we want to do with the land use and with the parcels to make them more available and more appropriate for modern economic development. Because we're seeing where that's worked in some ways, now it's how do we get the public sector, the streetscape, the look, the feel, into a project pipeline to do that. And all that sounds very complicated, but it really starts with hearing from our residents and from our people who want to visit Martinsburg, what is it you want? What is it you want it to look like? And you don't have to come and you don't have to be a lawyer and you don't have to be a planner and you don't have to have a bunch of uh, experience in any of these processes. This is really, what do you want on these streets? And, and we're not talking about obscure places. We're talking about King Street, Queen Street, Winchester Ave, Raleigh Ave, um, Raleigh Street. I mean, there's there's, uh, anyone can say anything about any part of the city that they want. We're focusing on those corridors, and the idea is that at the end of the day, we have a project list. Maybe it's 10 projects, maybe it's 20 projects, maybe it's 500 projects. We don't know what it's going to be, but it's going to be hopefully a way that we can match our capital budget to what we want to get done and figure out where there are those projects that are going to need a bigger lift. Hold on a sec. One second, Bill, because this would be a quick one. Right, when we talk about the city, are we talking about the downtown or the city limits proper? City limits proper. Yeah, I'm intrigued by streetscape and what exactly you mean by that. Uh, and you said you're not really sure. It's, it's an open-end question. Uh, but in the U.S., few cities have a what I would call a, uh, a very awe-inspiring entrance. Uh, whereas in Europe and South America and even the, uh, the Far East, you as you drive to the city, there are a lot of things that draw your attention. They can be murals, they can be statuesque, they can be a lot of different things. But that's not what we see in the U.S. very much. Are you thinking about more what we see in some of these other countries or more traditional what we see in the U.S.? Personally, Bill, I'm thinking a little bit more like you are, probably yeah. something in between there. Um, I think that's why we're asking people, and I hope you'll come and comment mm -hmm. and say that you want to see more of those types of things. Um, all, all of those types of questions of what's the scale, are we talking about monumental scale? And I remember when I worked in D.C., um, there was the South Capitol Bridge right next to the ballpark there that everyone loved when they were first redoing that. And they had a group just like this got in the room to talk about how they were going to redo the bridge. And all the engineers in the room were talking about load capacities and about heights to get the, uh, the, the, the boats underneath. And there wasn't even a stadium there at this point. And the mayor came in and basically said, I want a monumental bridge. And that changed the whole conversation. And now what you see of the Frederick Douglass Bridge there is the archways and the lighting, and it's all beautiful. And it, it looks very different than what a bridge designed by engineers to carry the biggest traffic through. <laughs> so what you're saying there is, is very true. We could have any number of scales of these things. We have to keep in mind that we, 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 don't, have, uh, we don't have a monumental budget. So it sort of has to be traded off uh, piece by piece there. But I think that's what we want to hear. What we have traditionally right now is sort of the low cost um, and, and the sort of um, 
sidewalks that are maintained primarily by the individuals. We, we don't have a lot of sort of large scale public maintenance stuff. Uh, when I was driving here, I saw our um, wonderful public works folks out with their weed whackers on Burke Street today. And it just it was a good reminder of every time you add to the sort of public infrastructure that's in the streets, streetscape, you add to the public cost of maintaining yeah, it. Yeah. So there's there's a trade off there. You want the really nice, but it has to be maintainable. You have to make sure you understand the budgets. That's what this process is about. I mean, there, there, there may very well be a difference of opinion in the community of the folks who want the monumental versus the folks who want the low budget. And we need to have the input from everyone saying their piece on that so that the engineers and the planners can take that all back and figure out whether we're trying to shrink things down to lower the cost, whether we're trying to make things monumental. My hope is that what we're trying to do is that we're trying to build the public sector streetscape that does the type of economic circulation around these new businesses that are going to help make them work. I think there's a, there, there is an equation for how that works best, and we have to make sure we're getting that sort of professional insight into it, too. Yeah. Wasn't the start of that chain perhaps the just the signage in general? Was that a? I think that was a a, a, um, a project that was done in conjunction with the development authority. I'm not sure, or was that the city by itself? But the just the signage coming in. Um, it's just lovely. Um, yeah, that, that one happened. Uh, I was here for the installation of the signs, okay. but I wasn't here for the process of the signs. Okay. I, I think that was a city uh, standalone project. It was mostly okay. a, a branding project. And this also has a branding element. I mean, mm -hmm. how you think of the city is, is going to be reflected by what you see at these entryways. That, that sure. is a major purpose of it. I think it's going to go beyond just what's the sort of signage that we can right. put up. And it's going to go toward how do we actually build these places to look different. Sure, sure. Joey, in the category of, of uh, not in reinventing the wheel, uh, do you have communities in mind today that you believe have hit the mark on having attractive sh streetscapes and, and entrances into their cities that, we're, that we can maybe model ourselves after? Well, I guess in the in, in in the spirit of best practices, this this is kind of what I do. I mean, I, I, I go around and I look at places that, that um, have that sustainable, walkable economic environment. That's just, for me professionally, that's what I've always done. I don't want to necessarily give you a particular example of one that I like because I'm just a resident in this and I think everybody has their example. I don't want to tilt the scale. Um, I know a lot of people around here, um, when they tell me what they like, they are very biased towards things that are familiar. So I hear a lot of Frederick, I hear a lot of Winchester, I hear a lot of uh, a, a lot of places that are sort of neighborhood scale nearby. Bill, I love your, your European analogy. Mm -hmm. I think there are a lot of good examples of this that aren't necessarily either the Winchester model or the Frederick model. And I think the reason that we have engaged professional planners to do that is because their job is also to be familiar with all these examples. And I think there is probably something distinct here driven both by the way West Virginia funds its streetscapes and its transportation projects and by what we're trying to achieve in this particular place um, that can be a mix of all those things and, and, and work well. Um, there aren't that many places that have the uh, traffic volumes that we have around a historic downtown and that is both a huge advantage for being able to draw folks to a downtown walkable area and a huge challenge because Historic downtowns by their nature were built before the amenities for cars. So you get into the whole thing. Everybody likes to talk about parking. Parking is only a quarter of the problem. Three quarters of the problem is you don't have loading zones. You don't have alleys for these things. And figuring out how you do that, that's what that's what public space and streetscape space means to the engineers is, oh my goodness, where's the alley that I'm gonna do the loading so that I'm not blocking the street, so that I'm not having all these spillover effects. And they run those things through mathematical models to see where there's gonna be traffic and all these different things. We really just need to hear from individuals, what do you want? And then we'll take what those questions are and we'll give those back to the planners and say, find us images of a place that does this best. So um, I would like to see a better ability to get around for the shortest of trips without cars, primarily because we don't have the space for the cars downtown. So letting folks opt to walk or bike or that sort of thing. Uh, Rob and I always have a little back and forth whenever he texts me to come out here. I've always got to find a car because my, <laughs> uh, my wife and I share a car because we live right downtown. And if I'm going to City Hall on Queen Street, I walk two minutes. And if I'm going to the temporary City Hall out on Foxcroft, I bike two minutes. And I'm there. You know, Shane, and, I can always pick you up at 5 a.m. when I get here. That's all right. You, you can you can pass me by on that. But, you know, when I did come out here, I, I understand what 
what people are saying about the traffic growing, and that is just what growth in this area is going to be. Um, this is part of that too, is understanding um, how do people want to think about that? Do we, do we want bike lanes? Do we want increased sidewalks? Do we want better sidewalk connectivity? Are there particular places where the sidewalks give out? Um, I think we all know there are that make it so that folks can't get around that way. And with the mindset of, you know, we're not making everybody do anything, but every person who gets around in a way that isn't a car is another car not in traffic with you. So we're just trying to figure out what's the best way to make the community work, to make the place nice, and to allow for enough of the interaction and movement that you need that it's attractive and that we have economic success of these new things that are coming but that begs the question what happened to all these scooters that were down in martinsburg that was going to uh, change the way people got around well they did uh that that's but they disappeared they did they did so i will tell you as the person who um had the uh privilege and obligation of managing that that program um they 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 did they did very well from a transportation standpoint if you were to look at the numbers for a roughly eighteen thousand person city and the usage rates for it the usage rates were very good bird was happy to be here and bird was happy to happy with what the usage rates were but the level of let's say cultural understanding of how the scooters were supposed to work and be left generated so many calls for me and and um it ended up just being a little bit more trouble because of course i i can't be managing these things and moving scooters around so i would end up calling bird and it it just ended up the operations weren't smooth enough the way they were going there um to really make it seamless in a new market so they've now they're they're still trying in west virginia i believe they've now got a contract in charleston i think they're working on huntington um, but they left just because the, the the operation wasn't seamless enough here to work for them so there could be lessons learned that may come back i i think there were lessons learned that there is a demand for that type of mobility um, there needs to be a lot more understanding that, that folks are not used to having scooters sitting around here in the way they might be. Um, I, I always tried to explain to people when they called that, well, we, you don't have a problem with your newspaper box being there. You don't have a problem with the trash can being there. Just treat the scooter like that. It's another thing. It's public. Just let it be there. But it was always a no. Someone needs to come get this off this sidewalk right now. And I think part of that comes from the fact that people do think of their sidewalk as their own. And mm-hmm. it's 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 simply not true. But it's one of those things that you're never going to get through well, the mind. Until there. it's in disrepair, then the city wants you to fix it. <laughs> well, that's right. Let, let, that's me, right. let me offer that. Cause that is right. your own. As a downtown business, I could tell No, you. that's true. And I will say that, that that was one of the biggest difference when I moved to West Virginia to do this type of work is, is other places I've worked before. Uh, two biggest differences are that other places pass through transportation budgets to their localities and other places have control of their uh, sidewalks. And so it, it it sort of puts some dampers on you on what you can and can't do to improve a local place if you don't really have a pass through of, of transportation funds uh, from the federal budget like most counties and other states do or, or localities in other states do. And when you don't have your sidewalks, when you take away both of those, you, you have relatively few options. And that's why instead of this being something that we're thinking about on a minute by minute, day to day public works basis, that's why we're, we need to have this sort of a master plan to say this is the opportunity when we're going to try and really figure out how we're going to go after the dollars that aren't part of our usual budget to do these better projects because now is a crucial time, crucial growth point, crucial inflection point for Martinsburg's economic development. We need to make sure that what we have control of and can get, get control of is built the way folks want it to succeed. Shane Farthing, our guest here, wrapping up the segment. Shane, how does the ultimate completion of the development of interwoven mills into apartments change the way the city of Martinsburg lays out some of their signs, presents the area, fills around it? That is an excellent summary of why we are doing these particular corridors as well. Uh, Don't sound so surprised about me coming up with a good thought there, by the way. <laughs> no, no, you're, you're, asking me, you're, 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 you're asking me to answer this, and I'm basically saying that is what this process is trying to answer. It's, it's partly the gateways in, but the gateways in that are relevant to that project, it's, it's on King, it's on Winchester, it's going to hugely impact what happens on, on Queen and yeah. the whole downtown. So a lot of this is asking people what you want to see in conjunction with that we're not we're not leaving all of these new developments out it's saying as the city progresses and as you see these new things 
what do you want your experience of the street to be like? What do you want your experience of Winchester Ave, South Queen Street, where, uh, you know, now you come off Apple Harvest at, at, at Queen Street and it kind of feels like a interstate interchange there and you're right at the high school and it's just a little weird, yeah. um, you know, and, and, and now you've got the same thing where you've got, we, we all kind of know that, that uh, Winchester King Porter work around the building thing isn't quite standard. You know, this is the chance to sort of say, this is a little wonky. What do we what do we do about it? And hear from people both, what do you think's a little wonky that you'd like to see better? Mm -hmm. And what would you like to see? So all of that is, this is the public input process where we've all got ideas, but everybody's are valid. And when is the meeting again? And uh, how do you find the survey online? So the meeting is June 1st from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. at the Holiday Inn. And I would encourage everyone to try to take the survey first if you can. Um, it's all over social media, and the easiest place to find it right now is if you go to cityofmartinsburg.org, the main city's website. It's in a little red bar at the very top of the homepage. Good to see you, Shane. Thanks so much for coming in. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Shane. Shane Farthing, he is the Economic and Community Development Director when for the City of Martinsburg.